driver. <laughs> Listen, Mrs. Naugatuck, you are working my New Year's Eve party tonight, and that's that. <laughs> Naugatuck, you break any of my good china, and I'll... <laughs> It's a relief to know the good Lord is still English. <laughs> Allah be praised. Allah? For broken China, I go Muslim. <laughs> because of your uncanny resemblance, I thought you'd go for Buddha. <laughs> anyway, finish taking this stuff inside and put it on the table. Here, what about my date with the bus driver? I'm all dressed up for it. I'm sorry, you'll just have to cancel it. Oh, drat! Drat! We were going to have a ball driving his bus all round the town. And at midnight, we were going to blow the horn. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, this is going to be a fabulous party. The most fantastic party ever. I mean, I guarantee you, this is not going to be one of those typical New Year's Eve disasters where all the guests sit around waiting for Guy Lombardo to come on while two drunks throw up in their paper hats. <laughs> what makes you think your dull party is going to be any better? Oh, because I have a big surprise, the greatest, most fun-filled idea I have ever had for a party. And I tell you what it is, except you have a big mouth. <laughs> I couldn't care less. You're going to hear it whether you want to or not. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? Something that hasn't been done in years. A lost art. A scavenger hunt. This is not marvelous. I planted little gifties all over the house, and the guest who finds the most little gifties gets a really big giftie as a prize. What's the prize? A paper hat to throw up in. <laughs> Nogatuck, don't be silly. It's going to be a jolly time. Viv, isn't it going to be a jolly time? Oh, shut up, Maud. <laughs> Maud, just look at this. These crumbs were a cake for your party tonight until my microwave oven blew up. <laughs> it's all your fault. My fault? Yes, if it were for your dumb party, I could have gotten another day's use out of my oven. I just hate New Year's Eve parties. Oh, Vivian, you are going to have the best time you have ever had at a party uh... tonight. Because I have a brilliant idea, Vivian. Mm -hmm. A surprise. Just hope it's better than your party last year, when we all sat around waiting for Guy Lombardo and George Freebody threw up in his paper hat. <laughs> <laughs> Whistle while I work. <laughs> By the way, Maud, I've got to tell you, I spoke to Estelle Ellinger today. So did I. Do you know that she had the nerve to call up and sniff around for an invitation? Uh, I did not invite her. <laughs> I did. Lillian, <laughs> how could you invite Estelle and Herman Ellinger to my party? They're always fighting. Well, so are you and Walter. I thought we could use a little variety. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing. Tonight's party is foolproof. Not even the Ellingers can ruin it. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year, Arthur. Happy New Year, my metatarsal arch. <laughs> well, what's the matter, sweetie? I had a flat tire on the throughway. Oh. I had to wait a whole hour before anybody could be flagged down. Oh, then he helped you change your tire? He did no such thing. He robbed me. He held me up. No. <laughs> he got $35 and a month's supply of rubber fingers. <laughs> New Year's Eve parties. Everybody gets drunk and asks for free medical advice. What really bothers Arthur is he gets drunk and gives it to them. <laughs> Listen, Arthur, I promise you, even you are going to have a ball tonight. Philip, 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 Philip. How would you do, like to do Grandma a little favor for her party tonight? Leave me alone, Grandma. I'm a kid and I'm cranky. <laughs> Vivian, how would you like to do Grandma a little favor tonight and at the stroke of midnight come downstairs wearing a diaper? <laughs> your big surprise for the party? Well, of course not, Viv. That's just a little extra trimming. <laughs> not for what I'm getting paid. <laughs> Happy New Year. At last, at last, somebody with a little holiday spirit. I'll see you all in 75. I'm going right to bed. <laughs> Walter, you come right back down here. Mort, don't give me a hard time. You know that Santa Claus I hired for Christmas? I just found out why he had such a big belly. 
He walked out of the store with two posters, a clock radio, and a portable color television. The same to you, Philip. One more word out of you, I'm gonna wake you up and Portia come down to your grandmother's lousy New Year's Eve party. Let me tell you something, little lady. It's still not too late for me to force you to take accordion lessons. Lord, <laughs> get off her back. Now, she deserved it, Walter. Don't but... snap at Walter, Vivian. No, I'm not gonna oh, 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 no, 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 It's New Year's Eve. We're supposed to be celebrating, remember? Celebrating what? There's nothing to celebrate. Because of inflation, I'm going broke. 74 was the worst year of my life. I agree with Walter. It was a terrible year. Watergate, the energy crisis, and those disgusting movies, The Green Door and The Devil and Miss Jones. Disgusting is right. I'd never go to see those again. <laughs> oh, listen, I'll grant everybody that 74 wasn't such a hot year, but... We can celebrate the coming year, 1975. 75 is going to be even worse. Who says so? President Ford says so, and he never says anything. <laughs> now listen here, Walter. You have no business to start attacking President Ford. Knock it off, Carol. Knock it off, Bibb. Knock it off, Arthur. Knock it off, Philip. Look, I'd grant you all that there is usually nothing duller in the world than a New Year's Eve party. And I'll also grant you that there's not much to celebrate about 74 or 75. But, kids, I have the world's greatest New Year's Eve party idea. I mean, it is absolutely fabulous. You want to know what it is? Come on, beg me. Beg me, beg me, beg me. <laughs> Enough begging, I'll tell you. <laughs> But I must swear you all to secrecy. I don't want any of the other guests to hear about this. This is something... Are you ready? Are you ready? A scavenger hunt. What? A scavenger hunt. No one has had one in years. It is a lost art. Oh, I've hidden little gifties all over the house. Oh, scavenger hunts are fun. You see, you see, you see. Even Vivian says they're a lot of fun. Ooh. Sure, I love the scavenger hunt last night at the Martins. You lie. <laughs> the Martins did not have a scavenger hunt. Oh, they had a scavenger hunt. How can I have a scavenger hunt now? I'll be the laughing stock of Tuckahoe. They'll boo me out of the beauty parlor. Don't <laughs> oh, panic. Maybe you've got better gifties. Oh, I doubt it. She had gifties from Gucci's. Shut up, Vivian. <laughs> oh, my party is ruined. The whole night is ruined. Oh, so what, Mort? It was a rotten year anyway. I don't want to celebrate 74 or 75. If I was going to celebrate any year, I'd pick a year that I liked, like 1937, or 42, or 58. Oh, what you do, that you do that, Walter! I wash my hands of the whole thing. I don't care what you did, what you will do. What... Walter, that's it. Walter, that's it. That's the party. Walter, that's the party! This is going to be the greatest New Year's Eve party ever! Oh. Mother, what are you talking about? Look, nobody liked 74, right? Right. 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 Why don't we each pick our favorite year and come as that year? Well, that's what a good great idea! idea. Yeah, I love you. We'll like all it. pick our most nostalgic sure. year to yeah. celebrate. Oh, 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 no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Now, listen, everybody has to wear something that is yeah. symbolic of what he or she was doing that particular year. Oh, Carol, you call the other guests. The list is over there. Oh, this is going to be the greatest New Year's Eve party. Tell me, uh, Mrs. Nogatite, what was your favorite year? Oh, I don't know. But I can tell you my least favorite year. 1492. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the time. 1492? If Columbus had discovered this flipping country, I wouldn't be working here tonight. <laughs> Chubby Checker, Bobby V. I was a teeny bopper. Bopper, yes. Teeny, never. <laughs> Hello, my name is Vivian, and I'm only five years old. 
then you shouldn't be drinking. <laughs> Guess what year I am? Uh, 48. No. 1776. You're close, Carol. 1952. The Republican Convention. I like Ike. I like Ike. I like Ike. I was an alternate delegate at large. Oh, boy. I could hardly believe those foot-long hot dogs. Some were a foot long. Uh, <laughs> Child molesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carol, I'm ready. Mother insists upon making an entrance. Oh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now is the time for us to present to you the star of her 1945 college freshman review, the brunette bombshell. <laughs> American beauty, Gypsy Rose Findlay. When I did it originally, I got six curtain calls. Oh, the entire Sigma Chi fraternity rose as one man and chased me across campus. <laughs> I let two of them catch me. Oh, 1945, that was the year to end all years. Oh, you're wrong there, Marty. The great year was 1952. Wow! I still get the chills when I think of my, me being in that great convention hall, listening to thousands and thousands of voices chant, I like, like... I like... That's thousands of voices. I like... Things. And Arthur, Arthur, don't forget his vice president. Millhouse, what's his name? <laughs> uh, his dog, Checkers. <laughs> if only that dog could have talked. Good evening from World War II. I left my heart at the stage door canteen. <laughs> Wait a minute, Walter, that's not all you loved at the canteen. <laughs> Lord, when I was in the Army, I weighed 235 pounds. Oh, come on, Walter, 235 pounds. That's right, in those days, I had a lot of hair. <laughs> that must be the Ellingers. Crackers, Irwin? Jocelyn, would you like some crackers? I hope at least tonight they are not arguing. I can't stand you! Uh, well, all you do is you stop Wait, me wait sick. a minute, don't tell me. You've come as the year of the Dempsey Tunney fight. Um, <laughs> Estelle, why do you keep slapping me? Because I love to slap well, you. you. Gonna keep slapping oh, me. Knock it off. <laughs> Who is this? Oh, that's Aunt Polly. I didn't have any place to leave her. I, she's 94 years old. 93! She lies about her age. <laughs> but she loves parties. So do I. Especially ones without him. Oh. All right, then you just stay here. I'm going to the Harrison's party. Not without me, yeah. you don't know, Oh, now, wait a minute. Hey, guys, guys, you forgot Aunt Polly. Oh, the hell with them. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, may I take your coat, Aunt Polly? <laughs> Polly, want a cracker? <laughs> and now tell me, Aunt Polly, what would you like to do? Cut everybody out of my will. <laughs> That's a lovely sentiment. <laughs> Aunt Polly, would you care for some champagne? <laughs> for one thing, Aunt Polly's a cheap drunk. <laughs> so 
smile, Mrs. Nogatuck. It's New Year's Eve. For you. For me, it's Labor Day. Cheer up! <laughs> I must say, you know how to cheer a person up, all right? <laughs> Come on, Finley. What did I tell you? Didn't I say it would be fun-filled? Look yeah, at all the guests. it's fun-filled, but you haven't said a single word to me since you came downstairs, and after all the trouble I went through with my costume. Oh, Viv, honey, I'm sorry. Now, let me look at you. <laughs> Oh, my, don't you look precious. Oh, thank you, Mike. I'm celebrating the happiest year of my life when I was only five years old and my daddy loved me the most. He used to buy me dollies and great big lollipops and he took me to the park and he pushed me in the swings and he would teach her totter with me. Everybody, everybody. <laughs> Vivian is coming as, her, as the year her daddy loved her the most, when she was six years old. No, not six! Five! Five years old! Well, all right, not Vivian, six. what's the difference? Six. I hate, hate, hate six! Vivian! When I was six years old, my father's love for me was destroyed by an outside force. Oh, Vivian, a divorce? No, my rotten baby brother was born! <laughs> he and my daddy spent the rest of their lives shooting baskets! <laughs> Wasn't I a good dribbler? <laughs> oh, uh, Carol, Carol, sweetheart, every now and again, hold a spoon in front of Aunt Polly's mouth. See if she's still breathing. <laughs> Remember, dear, she's 92. 91. <laughs> oh, Vivian, honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, dear heart, you're spoiling the party. Oh, well, I thought leave Vivian alone. Well, I don't understand why she picked that year up and makes her so miserable. For heaven's sake, she could have picked a good year, like mine, 1952. Arthur, how can you say that 52 was a good year? We were in the middle of a recession. There was trouble in the middle East. Lord's right, Arthur. 1952 was a rotten year. It's good year. You're a lousy year, Walter. Lousy year? I'll have you know that 1942 was a great year. Oh, sure. A great year, Walter. Great for Hitler, Mussolini, Hirohito, Hildegard. <laughs> All I meant was that it was a swell year for me personally. I was a young guy in the army without any responsibilities. There were plenty of girls. It must have been hard enough to go out with a 235-pound PFC. <laughs> <laughs> they were. That's what I liked about them. <laughs> oh, come on, Walter. 42 was a grim year. Daddy! <laughs> My fingers were too stubby to hold a basketball. <laughs> you grow up. Oh, yeah. Well, that year you're celebrating, 1945, was the worst year of your life, and you know it. That is not true, Vivian. I loved 1945. I adored 45. I remember your complexion, Maud. You were the campus zits queen. <laughs> The entire Sigma Chi fraternity didn't chase you across campus. It was Harold Farquhar, the Zip King. <laughs> and let's not forget that was the year you met your first husband. Aha! Uh -huh. I don't want to hear about 45 <laughs> anymore, <laughs> ever again. What was wrong with meeting your first husband? He was my father. And for that, I will always love him, Carol. But I could have married Harold Farquhar, and you would be the Zip's princess. <laughs> don't you mother me, Miss Motorcycle 1961. Of all the thoughtless years you could have chosen, that was the year that I was not only getting a divorce from my second husband, but I fell asleep under the dryer and all my hair fell out. <laughs> For three months, I looked like Yule Brenner. Yeah, except you were taller. You start with me, Caro. You were the wildest thing in the world in those days. I, you drove me crazy. Well, you'd be wild, too, if you had no father and a bald mother. <laughs> Marty, stop attacking the poor girl, just because your year your turned out to be a big flop. My year, Arthur? What about your year, Arthur? You leave my year alone. 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 Forgive me for interrupting, but since, since nobody can decide on a favorite year, I'd like to propose a toast to my favorite minute. Oh, Aunt Polly, please don't trouble yourself. Oh, but when you get to be my age, 89. <laughs> <laughs> Last year isn't important. Next year isn't important. But what is important is what's happening now. Now? Now, baby. <laughs> Polly's right, you know. 
<laughs> even though I have been complaining all night, uh, the fact is that I work for the Finlays. And I've never been so happy in my life. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Nagatuck, what a lovely thing to say. And I'd like to smell your breath. <laughs> So would I. <laughs> God love you all. <laughs> oh, oh, Mrs. Nogata, come back here, dear. Come back here. And please forgive us. Here we've been indulging our egos over a lot of silly years in the past. Years that really weren't half as nice as we remember them. Come on, everybody. Aunt Polly is absolutely right. The present is what counts. Here, here. Oh, it's still here. Oh, happy 1875. Uh, Aunt Polly, Aunt Polly, not 1875, 1975. It's a difference. It's now. I agree. Right on. <laughs> well, Happy now, Wolf. Happy now. Do more. It's four o'clock in the morning, and and Polly is still going strong. I think I think someone's been spiking her champagne with Geritol. <laughs> well, I'm exhausted. Why don't I just ask her to stay overnight? Great idea. And Polly. And Polly, isn't it time we went to bed? Sure, kiddo, but what'll your wife say? Dear, <laughs> her daddy loved her the most when she was six years old. No, no! Years old. Well, all right, Bethany, what's the difference? Six. I hate, hate, hate six. Vivian. When I was six years old, my father's love for me was destroyed by an outside force. Oh, Vivian, a divorce? No, my rotten baby brother was born. <laughs> <laughs> he and my daddy spent the rest of their lives shooting baskets. <laughs> Why wasn't I a good dribbler? <laughs> oh, uh, Carol, Carol, sweetheart, every now and again, hold a spoon in front of Aunt Polly's mouth. See if she's still breathing. <laughs> Remember, dear, she's 92. 91. <laughs> oh, Vivian, honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, dear heart, you're spoiling the party. Oh, well, I thought leave Vivian alone. Well, I don't understand why she picked that year and makes her so miserable. For heaven's sake, she could have picked a good year, like mine, 1952. Arthur, how can you say that 52 was a good year? We were in the middle of a recession. There was trouble in the middle Boys, of... Boards right off, and 1952 was a rotten year. It's good year. You're a lousy year, Walter. Lousy year? I'll have you know that 1942 was a great year. Oh, sure. A great year, Walter. Great for Hitler, Mussolini, Hirohito, Hildegard. <laughs> All I meant was that it was a swell year for me personally. I was a young guy in the army without any responsibilities. There were plenty of girls. It must have been hard enough to go out with a 235-pound PFC. <laughs> they were. That's what I liked about them. <laughs> Oh, come on, Walter. 42 was a grim year. Daddy! Vivian! <laughs> My fingers were too stubby to hold a basketball. Vivian, <laughs> will you grow up? Oh, yeah! Well, that year you're celebrating, 1945, was the worst year of your life, and you know it. That is not true, Vivian. I loved 1945. I adored 45. I remember your complexion, Maud. You were the campus zits queen. <laughs> The entire Sigma Chi fraternity didn't chase you across campus. It was Harold Farquhar, the Zip King. <laughs> and the 
not forget that was the year you met your first husband. Aha! Uh -huh. I don't want to hear about 45 <laughs> anymore, <laughs> ever again. What was wrong with meeting your first husband? He was my father. And for that, I will always love him, Carol. But I could have married Harold Farquhar, and you would be the Zitz Princess. <laughs> Don't you mutter me, Miss Motorcycle 1961. Of all the thoughtless years you could have chosen, that was the year that I was not only getting a divorce from my second husband, but I fell asleep under the dryer and all my hair fell out. <laughs> For three months, I looked like Yul Brenner. Yeah, except you were taller. Did you start with me, Caro? You were the wildest thing in the world in those days. I, you drove me crazy. Well, you'd be wild too if you had no father and a bald mother. <laughs> Marty, stop attacking the poor girl just because your year your turned out to be a big flop. My year, Arthur? What about your year, Arthur? You leave oh, my year alone. <laughs> Smile, Mrs. Nogatuck. It's New Year's Eve. For you. For me, it's Labor Day. You're up. A... <laughs> I must say, you know how to cheer a person up, all right? <laughs> What did I tell you? Didn't I say it would be fun-filled? Look yeah, at all the guests. it's fun-filled, but you haven't said a single word to me since you came downstairs, and after all the trouble I went through with my costume. Oh, Viv, honey, I'm sorry. Now, let me look at you. <laughs> oh, my, don't you look precious. Oh, thank you, Mark. <laughs> I'm celebrating the happiest year of my life when I was only five years old, and my daddy loved me the most. He used to buy me dollies and great big lollipops. And he took me to the park, and he pushed me in the swings, and he would teeter totter with me. <laughs> everybody, everybody. <laughs> Isn't this sweet? Vivian is coming as, her, as the year her daddy loved her the most, when she was six years old. No, not six! Five! Five years old! Well, all right, not Vivian, six. what's the difference? Six. I hate was destroyed by an outside force. Oh, Vivian, a divorce? No, my rotten baby brother was born. <laughs> he and my daddy spent the rest of their lives shooting baskets. <laughs> Why wasn't I a good dribbler? <laughs> oh, uh, Carol, Carol, sweetheart, every now and again, hold a spoon in front of Aunt Polly's mouth. See if she's still breathing. <laughs> Remember, dear, she's 92. 91. <laughs> Vivian, no. honey, I'm sorry. No. Come on, dear heart, you're spoiling the party. Oh, well, I thought leave Vivian alone. Well, I don't understand why she picked that year and makes her so miserable. For heaven's sake, she could have picked a good year, like mine, 1952. Arthur, how can you say that 52 was a good year? We were in the middle of a recession. There was trouble in the middle East. Lord's right, Arthur. 1952 was a rotten year. It's a good year. You're a lousy year, Walter. Lousy year? I'll have you know that 1942 was a great year. Oh, sure. A great year, Walter. Great for Hitler, Mussolini, Hirohito, Hildegard. <laughs> All I meant was that it was a swell year for me personally. I was a young guy in the army without any responsibilities. There were plenty of girls. It must have been hard enough to go out with a 235-pound PFC. <laughs> they were. That's what I liked about them. <laughs> Oh, come on, Walter. 42 was a grim year. Daddy! Vivian! <laughs> My fingers were too stubby to hold a basketball. Vivian, <laughs> will you grow up? Oh, yeah! Well, that year you're celebrating, 1945, was the worst year of your life, and you know it. That is not true, Vivian. I loved 1945. I adored 45. I remember your complexion, Maud. You were the campus zitz queen. <laughs> We were in the middle of a recession. There was trouble in the Middle East. Lord's right, Arthur. 1952 was a rotten year. It's a good year. You're a lousy year, Walter. Lousy year? I'll have you know that 1942 was a great year. Oh, sure. A great year, Walter. Great for Hitler, Mussolini, Hirohito, Hildegard. <laughs> All I meant was that it was a swell year for me personally. I was a young guy in the army without any responsibilities. There were plenty of girls. It must have been hard enough to go out with a 235-pound PFC. <laughs> They were. That's what I liked about them. <laughs> oh, come on, Walter. 42 was a grim year. Daddy! Vivian! <laughs> My fingers were too stubby to hold a basketball. Vivian, <laughs> you grow up! Oh, yeah! Well, that year you're celebrating, 1945, was the worst year of your life, and you know it. That is not true, Vivian. I loved 1945. I adored 45. I remember your complexion, Maud. You were the campus zitz queen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the 
entire Sigma Chi fraternity didn't chase you across campus. It was Harold Farquhar, the Zit King. <laughs> and let's not forget that was the year you met your first husband. Aha! Uh -huh. I don't want to hear about 45 <laughs> anymore, <laughs> ever again. What was wrong with meeting your first husband? He was my father. And for that, I will always love him, Carol. But I could have married Harold Farquhar, and you would be the Zit's princess. <laughs> Don't you mutter me, Miss Motorcycle 1961. Of all the thoughtless years you could have chosen, that was the year that I was not only getting a divorce from my second husband, but I fell asleep under the dryer and all my hair fell out. <laughs> For three months, I looked like Yul Brenner. Yeah, except you were taller. Did you start with me, Caro? You were the wildest thing in the world in those days. I, you drove me crazy. Well, you'd be wild too if you had no father and a bald mother. <laughs> Marty, stop attacking the poor girl just because your year your turned out to be a big flop. My year, Arthur? What about your year, Arthur? You leave my year alone. 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 You leave my year Forgive me for interrupting, but since, since nobody can decide on a favorite year, I'd like to propose a toast to my favorite minute. Oh, and Polly, please don't trouble yourself. Oh, well, when you get to be my age, 89. <laughs> I, that, that, last year isn't important. Next year isn't important. But what is important is what's happening now. Now? Now, baby. <laughs> Polly's right, you know. Delegate at large. Oh, boy. I can hardly believe those foot-long hot dogs. Some were a foot long. Uh, <laughs> oh. Arthur! You cut that out, or I'll have you arrested for child molesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carol, I'm ready. Mother insists upon making an entrance. Oh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now is the time for us to present to you the star of her 1945 college freshman review, the brunette bombshell. <laughs> the long-stemmed American beauty, Gypsy Rose Findlay. <laughs> When I did it originally, I got six curtain calls. Oh, the entire Sigma Chi fraternity rose as one man and chased me across campus. <laughs> I let two of them catch me. Oh, 1945, that was the year to end all years. Oh, you're wrong there, Marty. The great year was 1952. Wow. I still get the chills when I think of my, me being in that great convention hall, listening to thousands and thousands of voices chant, I like, like... I like... That's thousands of voices. <laughs> I like... And Arthur, Arthur, don't forget his vice president. Milhouse, what's his name? <laughs> you know, his dog, Checkers. <laughs> if only that dog could have talked. Good evening from World War II. I left my heart at the stage door canteen. <laughs> Wait a minute, Walter, that's not all you left at the canteen. <laughs> Lord, when I was in the Army, I weighed 235 pounds. Oh, come on, Walter, 235 pounds. That's right, in those days, I had a lot of hair. <laughs> that must be the Ellingers. Crackers, Irwin? Jocelyn, would you like some crackers? I hope at least tonight they are not arguing. I can't stand 
Oh, you do. Oh, all you have to do is you talk, talk. Wait, wait a minute. Don't tell me. Must be the Ellingers. Crackers, Irwin. Jocelyn, would you like some crackers? I hope at least tonight they are not arguing. I can't stand you. Oh, all you have to do is you talk. Wait, wait, me wait a sick. minute. Don't tell me. You've come as the year of the Dempsey Tunney fight. Um. <laughs> Estelle, why do you keep slapping me? Because I love to slap well, you. You're gonna keep slapping me. Knock it off. <laughs> Who is this? Oh, that's Aunt Polly. I didn't have any place to leave her. I, she's 94 years old. 93! She's lying about her age. <laughs> but she loves parties. So do I. Especially ones without him. Oh. All right, then you just stay here. I'm going to the Harrison's party. Not without me, yeah. you don't trust oh, me. Now, wait a minute. Hey, guys, guys, you forgot Aunt Polly. Oh, the hell with them. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, may I take your coat, Aunt Polly? <laughs> Polly, want a cracker? <laughs> and now tell me, Aunt Polly, what would you like to do? Cut everybody out of my will. <laughs> That's a lovely sentiment. <laughs> Aunt Polly, would you care for some champagne? <laughs> for one thing, Aunt Polly's a cheap drunk. <laughs> Smile, Mrs. Nogatuck. It's New Year's Eve. For you. For me, it's Labor Day. <laughs> I must say, you know how to cheer a person up, all right? <laughs> What did I tell you? Didn't I say it would be fun-filled? Look yeah, at all the guests. it's fun-filled, but you haven't said a single word to me since you came downstairs, and after all the trouble I went through with my costume. Oh, Viv, honey, I'm sorry. Now, let me look at you. <laughs> oh, my, don't you look precious. Oh, thank you, Mark. <laughs> I'm celebrating the happiest year of my life when I was only five years old, and my daddy loved me the most. He used to buy me dollies and great big lollipops. And he took me to the park, and he pushed me in the swings, and he would teeter totter with me. <laughs> everybody, everybody. <laughs> Isn't this sweet? Vivian is coming as, her, as the year her daddy loved her the most, when she was six years old. No, not six! Five! Five years old! Well, all right, not Vivian, six. what's the difference? Six. I hate, hate, hate six! Vivian! When I was six years old, my father's love for me was destroyed by an outside force. Oh, Vivian, a divorce? No, my rotten 